Not 
special needs also I'll just go to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity it is to be in your house and to be amongst our people, Lord. As we join in one mind and in one accord, we have that your presence to be here touching, reaching, ministering to each and every life, each and every request, spoken and spoken life. Show your hand strong, Lord God, in each and every one of these situations. That testimony would be given of your goodness and grace. And Father, we'll thank you for everything that's done. Not only in each and every one of these requests, but Father, in this church this morning, Lord God, we just ask you to touch our hearts, prepare us to receive and anoint us of grace, Lord God, and anoint the pastor as he brings you forth your message, and Father, we share it. Give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord all. Christ Jesus' name, the church says.
суеверный стоит. several cups of tea, a lot to pray from such good tea was given to her. And then mom prayed her. Dad made her way in the living room to watch her bring what she had bring a cup of tea. Isn't this just the cutest thing? So Amy waited, and sure enough, Sierra came down the hall with a cup of tea for Daddy. You know, cute. She came down the hall with that cup of tea for Daddy. Mom watched as, as he got his and she gave it to him, and he drank it. I did drink it. Then she said, as only a mama could, that if ever could, he's the only place she can reach to get the waters from the toilet. Oh, <laughs> 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 I get a cage, so well nurse, or cage match. They say, Hey, help me. Don't give me this up. Get me out of that cage. I'm like a lion in a cage. <laughs> you know, all these scams are talking about is the government beings of out there measures. There's not a scam to any information. I've been buying this morning. The law does not know. But you get an email. If you get an email, if you get an email, <laughs> subject, knock, knock, don't open it. It's John Witness working from home. <laughs> glory, glory to the Lamb of God. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. Of course, now, again, spiritual warfare, are you ready for battle? And this is so important. Uh, let's go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. This is just our theme for right now. We're going to start eventually going into the armor, but before we can we can put the armor on, we got to be ready to carry that armor. And it's not easy carrying that armor if you're not prepared for it. Amen? you got to be ready for the armor in order to carry it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And in the power of his might. But over the whole armor of God, you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For the wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, taking you the whole armor of God, you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Y'all say that. Look at somebody say, having done all to stand, stand. Say it to somebody else. And see, God is so, so, so awesome. Now, this is part eight. We haven't even gotten to the armor yet. It's probably part 11 or 12, maybe further, until <laughs> we get into the armor. <laughs> but again, you got to have the under armor ready to be prepared to carry the armor. Say somebody, tell somebody I want to be prepared to carry the armor. I'll be prepared to carry the armor. <laughs> okay, so here we go. 
Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, said. Here I am, Lord, send me. Occupy does not mean to take up space. It does not mean to take, it does mean to take a stance. It means to be productive, to take back lost ground and property. Oop, got another one. There we go. Right direction. There we go. What the world? I'm going everywhere now. I'll get it in a minute. Hold on. I hit the wrong button and everything you're crazy. Here we go. <clears throat> Nothing ahead of you is bigger or stronger than the power of God behind you. Be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Yeah. Here it is. This is what I write. We just read it. Be strong. Don't say now. Be now. Strong. Infused. In the Lord. One place. In his power. Overwhelming, irresistible. And his strong arm, his might. Okay, so, so here we go. <clears throat> the devil's door. I know this. Some people told me that this is actually a movie or a game or something. I don't know. But I looked up to the door and that looked so powerful. I thought I was going to use it here. For those who don't know what that is, that's just the devil at the door. Amen. So now, just a quick, just quick to get us on the same page here for those that haven't had a chance to, to be in all of these we've had going on now. It's the Last Supper. And there's 14 present. Jesus and his disciples. That's 13. Who's 14? Say, in this church today, how many people we got? But you could also add the Holy Spirit, and you could also add Satan, because he's sitting around on his pews trying to tell you you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, or you got nothing, or whatever, or something taken, or whatever. You got to understand that's Satan's mentality. It was to get in under your skin and confuse you. So look, he was looking for a way to get to Jesus. And it was a doorway. He knew looking for a doorway, an entry point to get into his life so he could affect his life. But the Bible said that he found nothing, no way to get into Jesus' life. So because he couldn't, because every door was shut, he's still looking. He said, there's got to be a way I can get Jesus. Jesus led that life that kept the door closed. He said, Satan looked for somebody close to him. Y'all, please, this is so Powerful. Please don't miss this. Satan couldn't get Jesus. So he looked for somebody close to him to get to him. And of course, it was his disciples. There was a dispute amongst the disciples. That whole time when they having that last supper, we look to see that picture from Leonardo on the bench and say, man, wasn't that just the most awesome, awesome scene? But if he could actually show it the way it was, they were arguing. Which one is God going to use the most? So there was a dispute amongst them. And there's a dispute, a dispute within them. How come he didn't pick me? How come he didn't call me to rock? How come I'm not doing this? How come I'm not doing that? Well, why could I be in the inner circle? What's going on here? And these disputes produce doors. Entry points for satanic activity. You ain't got to play with the Ouija board to open the door for Satan. All you got to do is Things I'm getting ready to show you. And you will then open the door and hit your point for Satan. Now, the day is very special. Let's go over the first two. Then we're going to go over the day. Today is so special. I did not plan for this to be the day. But when I was working on it, I said, wow. I didn't realize it was the 4th of July. And so that was God working in the details. So now watch this. The very first door we talked about already was fear. So how can I close the door to fear? Realize that fear, to be able to a long sermon on this, this is only, 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 only uh, a clip from it. Realize that fear is from Satan, that fear is a choice, and you don't have to accept it. Choose faith in God and his ability to handle your past, your present, your future, your problems, and your giants. The next goal is pride. I know nobody in here has ever had any problem with pride. Amen. If you say right now, I've never, what's this? If you've never had a problem with pride, put your hand up. Because you put your hand up and say it's your first problem with it right there. <laughs> Amen? So, here it is. First fear, and next is pride, which is inflated 
self-interest. I want you to ask yourself these questions for this one. And this is so simple. Look at this. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Where's that man standing? In the empty tomb, looking in the mirror and seeing Jesus' reflection. That's right there, the whole sermon. He's in the empty tomb, seeing Jesus' reflection in the mirror. So, here's your four questions. Ready? Here they come. Your four questions. Number one, am I in competition with others? Here it is. How, how do you know you're in competition with others? Can I listen to the opinion of others? Can I listen to the opinion of others without attacking them? And can I listen to the opinions of others without believing my opinion is the only one? Because when that happens, there's pride rearing up inside. Do I feel self-sufficient? I don't need anybody. I got this. Or do you struggle with self-image? Do I choose my friends for appearance, position, or performance? If you do, refer to Philippians 2 and 5. He made himself of no reputation. He took on the form of a servant. And he died on that cross. This door here is probably, I won't say the most powerful door, but this door right here is going to actually can make you, any of them can, but especially this door. This door is actually what I call the hinge. Not only because it's in the middle of the five things we're going to talk about, it's because everything swings on this door. Y'all ready for it? Forgiveness. The gift that keeps on giving. Get it, Walter. Let's hear it, bro. <laughs> he likes it. Y'all like it, too. Right. Forgiveness. The gift that keeps on giving. Here it goes. If you, or for if you forgive men their trespasses, the Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You got to understand that in context of what it's talking about. But see here, will you forgive me? And it says yes or no. What's that yes put down with? A nail in blood. Jesus says, yes, I'll forgive you. So get ready. Here it goes. One of the most effective doors that Satan uses to enter our lives is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is not just a door. Have you ever gone to a house of mirrors and there's a mirror in front of you and a mirror in back of you and you look and you just keep seeing on and on and on and on and on? That's how forgiveness is. It's like stepping in a house of mirrors and you got one behind you, one in front of you, and you just keep seeing yourself, boom, 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 the same way. Unforgiveness opens many, 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 many doors. It starts as a subtle, a subtle whisper. You know you didn't deserve that. You know they don't really love you. You know if you really were a child of God, you wouldn't be having these problems. You know that they just think you're something else. You know that those people don't like you. You know, you know, you know. It'll be a whisper. But then it explodes in our lives like a tidal wave. You've been around somebody and go, I got this, I got this, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And in a day or two, you see them and they're not fine anymore. It's because that tidal wave has started erupting in their life. So now, it locks us down and knocks us out of spiritual balance. <clears throat> he says, if you don't forgive others, he's not going to forgive you. Well, I don't have the power to send somebody to heaven so that's not a, a redemptive trait of God. He's the only one that can send let us, let us into heaven. But if I don't forgive you, then God's not going to forgive me. Does that mean I won't go to heaven? No, what that means is that you're going to cause some hell on earth. You're going to cause hell in your life, and you're going to cause hell in somebody else's life. And what happens is, you get knocked out of spiritual balance. 
Although it starts with one, you, if you're carrying unforgiveness, it will affect every relationship. Get your Bible out. Turn to Matthew 18. Matthew 18. You can stay seated because this might take a while. If you get tired of listening, if, if you if you quit, if, if your rear wears out before your ears do, still sit there. Matthew 18, verse 1. Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. That's what the biblical law said. And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Does that mean that 490 times or 491 you can let him hold it? Does it mean that 491 you can let him have it? No, whenever you see Jesus using astronomical numbers, Usually what that is indicating is Jesus talk, is talking about infinity. So how often can a person trespass against me and I forgive him? He said 70 times, 7 times, or infinity. Jesus said to him, I say to thee, until 7 times, but 7 times 7, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which will take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. In today's economy, get ready. 10,000 talents is between 3 and 13 billion dollars. Somebody can go, whoa. Between 3 and 13 billion dollars. But as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children, all that he had in payment to be made. And so the devil fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosened him, or loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But that same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence. Somebody said a buck and a half. It's three to thirteen billion dollars is forgiven that debt and it's spread owes him a dollar and a half. Wow. And he laid his hands on him and took him uh, Laid his hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. Does that sound familiar? Isn't it just what the guy that moved a billion dollars said to his guy? And he forgave him? And now this guy owes him a buck and a half. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison to which he paid the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very sorry and came and told it to their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desired me. So thou not also had had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you. And his Lord was wrong and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. I've heard so many people say that means in there, they send them to hell. No, 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 It's not hell. It's here. Something in your life. It's like a bomb that's going off on the inside of you. You can't put it out. Your spirit's going to blow up and you don't know what to do. And it's an unforgiveness. And as long as walk and deliver the Lord ministry, you should pay all that was due to him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do unto you also. If ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother, their trespasses.
Look at that hammer. Resentment, bitterness, hatred, harm you. Forgive and be free. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive their sins, he's not going to forgive you yours. There's going to be a lot of people limping in heaven. There's a lot of church folk now that are limping. Oh, maybe not physically, but emotionally and spiritually, they're limping. They smile and they tell you everything's fine, but on the inside they're tormented and tormented and tormented. Maybe not, maybe not as bad as Saul of Tars, I mean, uh, uh, Saul of King Saul, but they're tormented and they're tormented and they're tormented. Matthew, what we just read, look at this. Unforgiveness number one, it'll bind you. He said, I want you to forgive them seven times 70. And the king himself was going to bind him and throw him in prison. Sin is a state, a spiritual revolt. Matthew 6 12 says, Forgive our debts. As we forgive those who, or forgive us our debts, we forgive those who dead against us. Somebody say, forgiveness opens our hearts. Say that. Forgiveness opens our hearts. Next, unforgiveness blinds us. How does he blind us? It says in verse 31, so when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. They forgot all the stuff that was done to them. They forgot all that. He forgot that he'd been forgiven three to thirteen billion dollars, and he was going to fight a man over a buck and a half, and do the same thing to him that a big man was going to do to him. Unforgiveness blinds us. We got to get them. Just got to get them. Got to get them. They hurt me. You're going to hurt them. And he hinders our relationship with God. And it hinders our relationship with others. Matthew 16, 15. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And I counsel people. There's two things. The two main things people are in torment or tortured over. Number one, some type of pain. Or abuse in their life. And number two, that's being done to them. And number two, <laughs> unforgiveness in their heart. That's them doing to others. That's the two biggies. Just about every day of my life, I get to hear this. Either somebody's causing them pain or they're causing their self pain because they cannot forgive the person. And it's hurt them. Before you get, don't get all hyper religious on me. Let me finish this. Let me say, you don't know what they did to me. <laughs> hey, you don't know what people done to me. Ain't no matter who's going to want, who's got the biggest scars. Ain't me saying it, it's God. Let me finish it though before you think I'm going to just tell you to go out there and just go crazy. I don't forgive this grind. It says, put him in prison. Until he pays everything. First, the, uh, forgiveness opens our heart. Unforgiveness blinds. Forgiveness says, opens my eyes. So it yeah, opens our eyes. And then forgiveness, unforgiveness grinds, but forgiveness opens the door to get beyond torment. It opens the door for God to do something special in our life. So now, again, Let's get going. Now, I know, I know. like I said, this is not the most comfortable thing because everybody, everybody's got somebody. I mean, I just mentioned that person's name. You kind of go. I forgive. 
First of all, I'll talk about forgiveness. Let me have to tell you what forgiveness is not. People get this all mixed up. Do not seek vengeance. I can't hardly read that thing. Do not seek vengeance or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbors yourself. Is that New Testament? No, it's Leviticus. Leviticus 19 and 18. That's Leviticus. Get ready. What forgiveness is not? Forgiveness is not denying the offense. Oh, it didn't really happen. Oh, the person applied to her, nothing to forgive. Yeah, it is. It hurt. Don't deny the offense like it never really happened. That's how you keep it inside, and that's how it never goes away because you decide to get in there to torment because you say, well, it didn't happen, or somebody tells you it wasn't as bad as you thought it was, or you got to be crazy, or, or you should be over there by now. And so you sit there and you rewrite on the inside and torment and start even doubting your own self. Did it really happen? Number two, it's not forgetting the offense. Let's just forget it. No. I've heard people say, I can just forget what happened. Really? Really. You know, uh, uh, Kevin, one of those guys that comes here from B5, the very first guy that came here when he first came, he had that mohawk home uh, on a Tuesday night, but then now he's a whole different guy. But, but he came in here and his hand is ruined. He's a contractor. His hand is ruined because in a wellness check, a wellness check, when the deputy opened his door to see if he was okay, he said, I'm all right, man. And he shot him. And paralyzed his arm for life. And now if he ever comes back, if he ever comes back, you notice that hand is paralyzed. And he hated cops. He hated them. And we worked on his forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And you know what he does now? He goes to cops all over in several states and talks about Trump program, talks about AA and NA, and talks about his life and how he forgave. He forgave that. He never even got compensated for that. But now he helps police all over in states, all over multiple states, because he learned the power of forgiveness. It's not excusing the offense. You can still hold others accountable for their actions or lack of. That's why people, when they say they forgave, they forgave and they forgot they did. You heard the old joke about the, uh, I buried the hatchet but I leave the handle sticking out. So in case I need I can pull it back out of the ground. This stuff right here, you just buried the hatchet, just the head. Handle still hanging out. You trip on it all the time. You fall over on it. You pull out every now and then and look at the head. And forgiveness doesn't mean things go back to the way they were before. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that when the slate is clean. Now, some people it is going to be, but there's going to be some people that it's not. It don't always lead to reconciliation. But it does open the door for it. Let's go a little bit further. Bethany, bless her heart. When they came to me, they said, we need you to come to court on behalf of this little girl who was the most abused kid in three counties. She was physically, mentally, emotionally, sexually abused by her stepfather at two years old. The dad who never had anything to do with her, that said she got to go with him. And he did some of the same things. I was instructed when we got her, they said no man can do anything with her. 
She hates men. She hates women. Nobody can touch her. Will you please come at least take her out and lunch and just see if you might want to foster her? That was her seventh day. And they said, just give her the try. I said, okay, I don't mind. I said, God's in this. Walked in the room and she was hid. Her name was Melissa at the time. She was hid. And the social worker and the foster mother had already told me they couldn't do anything with her. And the foster dad couldn't even get around her. No man could get around her. And they said, she was here and they said, Melissa, come on out. Meet the Lentons. Meet them. They want to come and take you to supper or to lunch. Don't you like pizza? That's your favorite food. Pizza. They will take you to any pizza. And she looked around and she says, come on, Melissa. It's okay. Mr. Linton loves little girls. And she peeked around. I saw them blue eyes and blonde hair. She peeked around. And all of a sudden, her eyes got about that big around, and she ran and jumped in my arms and squeezed my neck and held me. And she said, my big daddy won't let anybody hurt me. And a social worker and a foster mother and Beverly and I were sitting here in a sudden astonishment. And she just loved on me and loved on me and loved on me. And that day, God started a bond that lasted throughout her life. If you saw Bethany and me, you know where Bethany was at. She was with me. She loved her brothers very much so. She loved to be with them. But if I was around, she would daddy. And I remember the second operation she had. They were trying to, we didn't realize how the extent of how much her face was broken. When she was two, she wouldn't eat or suffer. And her stepdad grabbed her by the arm, yanked her out of the high chair. First, he slapped her face in the plate. And then he slung her around, and her face hit the wall. And he broke her growth plate. We did not know the extent of the damage until that second operation. Even Dr. Alvarez had no idea how bad it was. He apologized to us. He said, if I knew it was this bad, I'd have had her put in the hospital without an outpatient surgery and I'd have kept her. I'd had no idea. He said, there's no nose there. He said, it's all back in her face. It's all back in her skull. I had to pick it out a little bit where her face was smashed into a wall. I got so angry. And we went home and she was bandaged up and the only people that could see her was her mama, her brothers, and Danny Williams. And the other ones that could see her. And tears just rolled down her eyes all the time. And her eyes were black, had her face bandaged up. And I went over to the church to work on my sermon. I was so mad I just needed to do something. So I went over to the church to work on my sermon. And that was going to, it was the 4th of July. And it was going to be not just enough like this. this oh, this is different. But it's just going to be on the liberty of forgiveness. And I was, talking, I was praying and I was seeking God. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you hypocrite. Uh, how can you preach on forgiveness when you want to kill that man that hurt that girl? And I stayed there about an hour and an hour until me and God had a long meeting and a long talk. He said, I didn't say you had to reconcile with him. I said, you had to forgive him. I said, do you see the harm he's done to our daughter? He said, do you realize the harm he did to my son? They'll get you right in the bread basket. So I went home. And I said, Beth, we got to work on something. She said, what, Dad? I said, we got to work on forgiveness. And she didn't quite understand it all at the time. She was five. And so it took a while, but I kept telling you, you got to learn to forgive your dad and your step. You got to learn how to forgive the two guys because they abused you, they beat you, they molested you. You've got to be able to get beyond these guys. You've got to get beyond it. 
And I had these well-meaning people go, well, you know what? She was only two and four. She's already over it. She's five. She's over top ten. What? That will follow her the rest of her life. It's her formative years. It's the basis on how she thinks from here on out. And so I kept working with Bethany. I kept working with Bethany. I said, she said, I don't want to be around them. I said, you ain't got to be around them, but you definitely got to be healed. Colossians 3, 13 and 14, bear me with each other, forgive one another. If any of you have agreements against someone, forgive them as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So what is forgiveness? It's closing the door. It means to forgive, to let go, to release. It means to cancel a debt. I said, Beth, you can't hold on. I'm trying my best. My daddy, I said, I'm trying my best too, baby. You can't hold on. You got to let it go. Forgiveness is an act of the will. You got to want it. You got to understand how bad unforgiveness will hinder you and cripple you and hurt your spiritual relationship, not only with God, but with everybody around you. Forgiveness is a two step process. That day in that church when me and God had that one-on-one -on -one and God, when I said, do you understand know what he did to my daughter? And he goes, do you know what you did to my son? That day I made a decision to forgive him. I'm not ashamed to admit it. The process, it took me years. Years. Years with all those operations. And hearing her trying to breathe at night and seeing that she had all kinds of difficulties from all this. Some of y'all in here, you're saying, how more can I forgive? Do the two step process. Number one, make a decision. I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to forgive them. Now, the process may take years. I had a minister try to literally try to kill me spiritually and try to harm me every which way he could. And I found out the problem was he was fighting a minister that was over me and I was the pawn. I was quit the ministry before I ever got started because of it. I remember one day laying in my car and I was crying. I said, God, you... I know you understand every kind of pain, but you don't understand it. You do not understand what I'm going through now. This man who I love and I cherish, and I did all I could for him. I'm back, you know, but other people are not. And he attacked me. You don't know how I feel. And God said one word, and the healing began. He said, choose. I passed by him in camp meeting. I made that decision that day, but it was still a process. He come by me, here we go. And I'll go, well, hello, brother, how you doing? Because in my head I hear, I forgave him, I forgave him, I forgave him, I forgave him, I forgave him. I made that decision, I forgave him, but that was that process. Years later, the Holy Spirit got moving in the camp meeting. He was sitting in the seat in front of me. And I said, I heard the Holy Spirit say, now's the time. And I popped him on the shoulder. He'd already come in there and looked, only held his nose up to me. I said, I forgave you. And I put my hand on his shoulder. And I said, I love you, bro. And he turned around with tears in his eyes and he grabbed me and about squeezed my head off and said, I love you too, bro. I've always loved you. You've been like a son to me. But I believe if I hadn't made the decision, and if I hadn't trusted the process, that would have never happened. He died not long ago, but I know when he died, there was nothing between me and him but love. 
And when you learn how to forgive, you're truly modeling Christ. And it works way beyond reconciliation. Let's go a little further. Be reconciled. Again, here it is. This is this is not this is this is liberty. This is all about liberty. It's not fun. It's not a cool one, but it's really awesome. Get where I can see it. All things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. St. Corinthians. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. I'm not crazy. There's some people you can never reconcile with. Let me show you. Forgiveness needs only one person. I said, man, she said, what if they don't want forgiveness? They don't matter if they want it or not. You got to have some relief. I got to have some relief. All right, Beth, we're going to forgive. And we practice forgiving practice. We practice forgiving practice. The other day, they don't want to be around those guys. So one guy you won't be around because he's serving life. The other guy's probably in Arizona now. But if they come, I want them to be threatening our lives and say, he's coming to get me and Beth. And he, crazy. The whole thing is crazy. But forgiveness only needs one person. Reconciliation requires at least the parties involved, all the parties involved. I can forgive you without being reconciled to you. Sometimes the other person is dead. Sometimes the other person's moved on. Sometimes the other person does not want to reconcile. God didn't say that I had to reconcile with them, but he said I had to forgive them. Thanks one person. Forgiveness is directed one way. Reconciliation is reciprocal, reciprocal two ways. If you want relief today, you got to learn how to forgive. Also, forgiveness is a decision to release the offender. I release you. Reconciliation is an effort to rejoin the offender. Sometimes that's not cool. Bethany could not join with those two guys. There was no way. And when the guy threatened to come to church when he got out of prison, he was going to get me and her and I asked the law, what could I do? And I wasn't even getting all the things they told me, but I can tell you this. I sent my two biggest guys at the very back of the church. And I said, if he come in with a repentant heart, it'd be different. He says he's coming to get me and get Beth. As a matter of fact, he says he's going to kill me and get Beth. Because I testified against him multiple times in four years of court, three years of court, I testified against him. And I said to the guys, I said, stay in the back. I showed him his picture. I said, if he comes in, quietly ask him to step out. And when he steps out, I said, look, we believe God can heal you, but he can't heal you here. Bethan does not need to see you because it'll throw right back at you. She had PTSD so bad. I said, she does not need to see you. But, and so just to ask him to go out. I said, what's up? I said, no. Just ask them. Ask him to go out. Of course, I said he's not going to show up. Any man that'll be the younger like that's a coward anyway. He never showed up. Forgiveness is unconditional, regardless of lack of repentance on other people's part. Reconciliation is conditioned based on repentance and a change of behavior. Some people have proven that their behavior is not going to change. I can forgive you for slapping me, but every time I get around you slap me, I don't need to get around you. Because eventually I'm going to quit forgiving you and I'm going to start. So, forgiveness means simply loving someone enough to pursue healing instead of punishment when they have wronged you. See that barbed wire fence being opened up? What setbacks to forgiveness? Two of them. We just talked about them last week. I think it's, it's so awesome. Number one is fear. That what if. What if they don't acknowledge that I'm forgiving them? What if they don't change? 
what if they're no longer around? Come see me. I'm going to teach you how to handle it if they're no longer around. What if, what if, what if? Fear. And number two is pride. Why? Why should I forgive them? They don't deserve release. They do deserve pain. Do you notice people out here sometimes you're mad at and you won't forgive and don't even realize, they don't even realize they hurt you. They're not hurting. They don't even know they hurt you. That's why it's important that you learn how to give in to forgiveness, even if the scars they left are permanent. Forgiveness is the best form of love. It takes a strong person to say, I'm sorry. It takes even a stronger person to forgive. Wow. Unforgiveness has some danger to wars. I had this door open up with the guys that hurt Bethany. I had this door open up with this preacher that tried to crucify me. I've tried been so good to him. Unforgiveness leads to anger. See, the doors. Unforgiveness leads to anger. And unresolved anger leads to bitterness. Ephesians 4, 26, 27. Be angry. It's okay to be angry and sin not. There's boundaries. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath and set upon your anger. When I first heard this, I thought I couldn't go to bed mad at my wife. We stayed up one time for three days. She stayed up for five. I stayed up for three. I saw mine. <laughs> Be angry, be upset, but don't let it cause you to do some things that you're going to regret. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath is anguish, seething, temper, getting out of control. That's what it's talking about. You can't go to bed like that. Paul tells us, he says, because when you go to bed like that, you give place to the devil. You give a doorway to the devil. Have you ever gone to bed angry at somebody? Went to sleep, woke up, they said, let's just sleep on it. You woke up and you were madder than you were, madder when you woke up than you were when you went to sleep. You know why? Because Satan got in there and talked to you. He gave him a doorway. That's a no better I think I'll go to sleep now. And Satan goes, aren't you crazy? You must really be crazy to put up with that. Man, oh man, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. You must be stupid for putting up with that. Matter of fact, if I was you, I'd get I'd, I'd pull out that pillow and put it over their face and hold it down. I actually just know this, you can't smell somebody in the pillow. Unless it's got a plastic pillow around it. I learned that in Italian school. And so you got to say, man, and Satan just plays with your mind, he plays with your mind, and you start thinking of things and how to get back and how to do this. And by the time you wake up, you had a little bitty thing when you went to bed. Now you got a great big thing because Satan has entered the door. And it's taking control. You see, there's a battle. We all become angry. You show somebody don't become angry. I'll show somebody's got some good meds. Go down upon your wrath, bottled up inside of you. Because it's great in the bitterness. It gets bottled up inside of you, and it just rolls around like a steamroller, and it gets more and more and more and more and more. 
and he's blown out of proportion because Satan's got the door. And that word Satan there, or the devil, is actually diabolos, which means accuser. He will talk, jump to you about them and about yourself. Wow. I don't need any of those danger doors. Forgive yourself. Sometimes the person you're mad at you. Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. It's amazing how when I first got to D.C., he didn't come with a book. And the way he was, the book wouldn't work anyway. <laughs> By the time I got Daniel, I was a little bit more experienced. By the time I got Ben, I was no pro. It's amazing. D.C. and Daniel said, Ben didn't come and say, dude, he's being so hard on me. What am I going to do when D.C. and Daniel say, oh, get out of here. This ain't hard. Daddy's done learned different. Daddy's got old. He don't care anymore. He wants to get you really hard. I was doing a guy. Look at him laughing. They was there all the time. D.C. playing baseball. He's coaching baseball. Travel league. And his daughter's got a pitch in the middle of hitting slump. He said, Daddy, get her. I walked up and said, come here, baby. I put my arm around her. I gave her a kiss on the forehead and said, you having a bad day, baby? DC's ever going. I said, look, don't listen to you, Danny. He's had a hard week. He's, he, matter of fact, he's hard. He, don't even worry about him. I said, come on, I have some fun. I said, if you have some fun, things will change. She said, I'll go walk. I said, I mean it now. Just have fun. She went out there and DC was going, I don't know what you think you were doing. That's not how you treated me when I was a little boy. You'd have put your foot that far up me, and you'd have said, You ain't hitting that ball. I'm here with my brother. Right now. He said, You walked over here. There, there, little one. And she went to the bat and knocked it all the way to the fence. And DC said, And then that time, I know y'all told, told you, Daniel was doing it, and Daniel's girls were losing so bad. And Bethany, the very last ball game Bethany went to. I said, Daniel, they're losing really, really bad. Daniel says, I know. I said, can I go? Can I go? I got some body, I mean, it's not body, but face paint. Who put some face paint on? They can get intimidated. Intimidating. And then Daniel said, Daddy, don't touch them. Don't touch them. Put it back in your pocket. So I put it back in my pocket. And I walked over to the pool, to the dugout. Bethany said, Daddy, you got that face paint? I said, Daniel said, I couldn't put it on. He said, he said I couldn't. So I pulled it out and said, well, no, he did <laughs> I said, why don't you make him look intimidating? Make him look me. She said, I got this, Daddy. And we were talking to Daniel on third base, and all of a sudden his team comes out, and every last one of them had a black nose and three whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> they look like kitty cats. I said, that's not intimidating. Bethany, what are you doing to Bethany right now? Just a laugh, and she had a black nose and three whiskers. And I thought I'm going to do CPR on Daniel over there. But it's different. It's different what you learn. Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. Wow. Don't forget to see the anger. The number of anger is the bitterness. Bitterness leads to depression. There's a lot of depressed people around here. I can't really drop a bomb on you. I hope you want to be ready for the bomb. Everybody ready for the bomb? Ready? Depression many times is anger turned inward. Many times. Think about it. Many times, many times people, people are angry, angry and they can't, and find, they can't anybody find anybody else to be angry at or they can't really, really go on some else and they don't know themselves. And the anger, and the anger turns in, in and they start eating their self up, up, and they get, and they get depressed, depressed, and they get, and they get in prison. Forgiveness is release. I get ready to get, get, get out of here. Stop basing their actions, their actions but it's on your attitude. attitude. It goes ahead and sets them free. I've told the story multiple times that the bear is saying right here. I mean, I mean remember President Garfield, Garfield, Garfield if you did you a lot, lot older than you look.
President, President Garfield. Garfield. He'd been in office, office six for six months. months. And an assassin's assassin bullet, bullet hit him. The doctors, the doctors revived, revived him, him, but the bullet, but the bullet was, in was in his back. back. The doctor, the doctor revived, revived him and didn't have all this modern day stuff. stuff. And so they and probed, probed and they probed and they probed, probed, probed and they could and not find the bullet. And the bullet itself was killing him. They probed and they probed and found Alexander, Alexander Graham Bell. Bell developed an electrical device to find him. We now we call this medical device a metal detector. Did you know that's where it came from? Alexander Graham Bell trying to save President Garfield's life. But he went to the metal detector. He couldn't find it. Didn't realize, didn't realize his bed had, had metal springs. springs. Not many, Not many had metal springs by the end, so because he had metal springs, springs the metal detector didn't work. Didn't work. He died, he died two months later. later. Not, from Not from the bullet, bullet but from the infection from, from all that digging. digging. Stop, digging, Stop digging, in digging in the past. It won't, it won't heal you. It'll hurt you. Drop it. Drop it. The, assassin the assassin said, said this is his quote, quote I, shot I shot him, him. But, the but the doctors killed him. The doctors probed in his back with their fingers on a nasty, nasty train, train depot floor. floor. Infection, Infection set in. They approved for two more months on a metal bed, metal spring bed. And the infection got, got worse and worse. He went from 210 pounds, pounds to 130 pounds before he died. It wasn't, it wasn't the shot. The shot. It, was it was the constant, constant digging to find, to find the bullet. bullet. Some, of you, Some of you in here would be a whole lot better off if you quit trying to dig to find that bullet. You want liberty? You want liberty? Thank God he God, God can handle, handle a whole lot better, better than you can. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this. It's not, it's not, it's not up here. I'm going to give you a four-phase four four process, process to begin. Ready? Ready? Number one, Number one you must take a note, write this down. down. Number one, one cover your anger. Honestly, Honestly examine the unjust act and your feelings about it. Uncover your anger. I'm not angry. Yes, you are! Uncover, Uncover it. You can't fix it. You can't fix it. 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 You're going to deny it. Yes, yes, I'm angry. It was unjust. It was unjust. I hate it. I hate it. And number, and number two, two, decide to forgive. Be willing, be willing to turn your back on the pain and look forward to the future so God can start a healing process. Number three, number three work on forgiveness. Forgiveness is a process that takes recommitment. And concrete, concrete action. Number, number four, four discovery and release. Being, being open to discovering, to discovering the meaning of suffering, the need for, the need for forgiveness, the fact that you are not alone, and a new, and a new purpose, purpose is there in your, in your life. You don't forgive, you don't forgive people because, because you're weak. You forgive, you forgive them because, because you're strong. strong. Strong enough, Strong enough to know, to that, know that people, people make, make mistakes. mistakes. Chinese, Chinese proverb, proverb whoever opts for revenge, revenge should dig two graves. graves. One, for, one them for them and one for, one for yourself. Not forgiving, Not forgiving someone, someone is like drinking rat poison, poison and waiting for the rat to die. die. Ain't gonna happen. The rest can be, can be happy, happy, fat, happy, fat and happy, eating your cheese. Are you dying, are you dying on his poison? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Unforgiveness, Unforgiveness builds the wall. wall. Forgiveness, Forgiveness builds the bridge. bridge. It, changes it changes our status. Our status. From victim, From victim to victim. To victim. I, I, was I was doing some counseling this week with, with one of the prisoners. prisoners. And he had, and he had some rough things coming up, coming up really rough. And 
And I told him, I said, well, you know what? I know there's been a lot of pain. I said, but you got to remember this. this. God never wastes your pain. Ever. Ever. And God can use your pain in order for you to help some other person not get what you got. He said, you just don't understand how how powerful you are right now. And I saw the light turn on. And a frown became a smile. I said, go out there and let that pain propel you. Show others. I'm not a victim. I'm a victim. Y'all say that. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. One more time. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. It's a merciful and gracious God. He expects the same from us. It brings true liberty. Look at that. A colorblind guy did good, didn't he? Red, Red, white, white, and blue. blue. Actually, Actually it's written underneath it so I can see red. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, if you ever put in a motor, don't ask ask him what color red is. is. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you really strong right now. I'll help you even better if you think to do like your clothes. Hold, hold on just a minute. Stop, stop it. Stop, stop it. it. Not y'all. Not y'all. Yet. I can't even find one of my... Where's that? I'll just do it like this. Hold on. Hold on just a minute. I just got to do something. It'll pop back up. Praise God. Y'all going to have to forgive me. Not a problem. This happened... This morning, this morning the Lord changed some stuff, and I've been, I've been working all morning trying to get it back the way I felt like He wanted me to do it. All right, get ready. Here we go. Here it comes. I promise. I promise. Ready? Ready? Let's try it now. Nope, still didn't do it. Okay. Okay. Oh, so good. so good. It'd be nice, It'd be nice if I was, if I was as, good. as good as he was. <laughs> okay, we'll okay, just, we'll just do this. Obviously, obviously I don't even do the rest of it. I'll just do this. I want you to hear all day because eventually your forgiveness is worth 10. I'm going to help everybody in here. I'm going to do it for service. All of us. The day before Beth died, died. Couple well, a couple of days, I said, Beth, who do you want to see? Want to see? Tell me anybody, anybody you want to see if you haven't seen. I'd like to see, like see my half-sister. half-sister. I said, you can. I said, do you want to see your birth mother? She said, no, 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 no. I said, do you want to see your stepdad? She said, no, no, no. I said, you can't see your dad or your father. He's, He's in, in prison. prison. She said, I, she said, I don't care, Dad. I don't want to see him. I said, well, that leads me to the next question. Have you forgiven? And she looked at me like only Beth could do, and she said, Have you? I said, yes. I said, it wasn't easy, but I forgave him. And I said, you can't go to God with this in your heart. Did you forgive me? She said, yes, Dad. But just help me one more time. And so right there, me and her pray the prayer of forgiveness. She died a couple of days later. Right now, there's people in your life that you need to forgive. They've hurt you. And you, and you need to forgive them. Not because they need to relief, you need to relief. There's some people in life that need forgiveness, so y'all can reconcile. There's others that need forgiveness, and you don't need to reconcile. God will show you which is which. But either way about it, he said, number one, he's give us the ministry of reconciliation, but we are to forgive as he forgave. So we're going to so do, do this. We're all going to do it together. And then I want DC to come up and collect something. 
I want everybody, 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 everybody no music, music nothing, nothing right now. I want y'all to say this to me out loud. Lord of, Lord of grace, grace, if I hold in my heart the pain caused by, caused by others, by others I'll, find I'll find it hard to forgive. To forgive. Put, your Put your grace into, into my heart and allow me to let go of bitterness. Help me to forgive as freely as you have forgiven me, knowing that in forgiveness lies the path of true peace. Lord, please, Lord, please help, help me to forgive those who have hurt me and have sinned against me. me. Through, the Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit I can choose to live free of bitterness and anger over what others have done to me. Help me to, help me to release them into your hand and heal, heal the wounds of my heart. Put your hands up. Did you come up and play something? I really think that you could forgive a lot more people if you understood there's a difference in forgiveness and reconciliation. There is definitely people I don't need to reconcile with because they never stopped hurting me. But there's others that I need to reconcile with because they didn't understand they were hurting me. And vice versa, the people that I hurt and didn't know I was hurting. I've even hurt people when I was actually trying to help them. I was doing my best to help them, and he said it hurt me. And it took a long time. To understand that I had no harm. I was trying to help. Every head bowed. Before you bowed, you bowed, you bowed, you bowed, you Look at this. Look at this. If I've ever, if I've ever stopped, stopped spinning, spinning, shut the door. The door. It's cold, it's cold out, there. out there. Learn, Learn to forgive. You tell you them, Walter. Every, every, every head bow, every eye closed. Every eye closed. I'm going to ask some hard questions right, right now. On every, on every, every, every eye, eye closed, closed, every head bowed. But by but you admitting what I ask, if it's true or not true, if you raise that hand, you can think, you can think, of, think of this as the beginning of your healing. healing. First, First there's someone here that would say, I got, say, I got some people I just can't let off the hook. I just can't. I can't seem to forgive them. them. I, need I need help. Nobody, nobody looking, looking around, around no judgment, nothing. nothing. No, nobody nobody looking around. around. Can you put, can that, put that hand up? There's people that I just, just can't see. see. Bless, bless them, Lord. Bless, 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 bless them. Bless them. I understand there's, there's a difference. A big, a big difference, difference in forgiveness and reconciliation. reconciliation. That's another, another hard one. How many of those, many people, those people that you really can't, can't seem to let, let off the hood is actually, actually closer, closer to you than you, than you wish they were? were. Bless them, Lord. One more, one more big. Every head every bowed, bowed, every eye closed. closed. This, is, this the biggest. is the biggest. Who would dare, Who would dare say, say the, biggest the biggest person? I can't, I can't let off the hook. hook. I can't, I can't let, let go, go of, of and it's eating me up and it's destroying, destroying me. me. Is my, is my own self. self. So I put, so put that hand up. It's my, it's my own self. self. I can't, I can't seem, seem to get past what, I'm what I've done. Bless, bless them, Lord. Bless them.
Right now, right now I'm going to do something, something a little, a little different. Little different. I'm going, I'm going to, to repray, repray this, prayer. this prayer. Just keep, just your, keep eyes your eyes closed, closed your hands, hands up. up. And I want you, to, I want take you to take this to your heart. heart. Although I've helped Bethany over, over the years, over and over and over, and over again, there was, there was something about, about that last time where I noticed she was, she was going to meet God in just a matter of days. Of days. I, know I knew it was coming. coming. And there's a very powerful, powerful, powerful thing. thing. What well, was even more powerful when she asked me, can I forgive you? Every hip bowed, every eye closed. Lord of grace, if I hold my heart to pain caused by others, then I'll find, then I'll find it hard to forgive. Pull your, Pull your grace into my heart, my heart and allow me to let go of bitterness. Help me, Help to, me forgive to forgive as freely as you forgive me, 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 knowing that in forgiveness lies the path to true peace. Lord, please, well, please help, help me to forgive those, those who have hurt me and have sinned against me. me. Through, the through the power of your Holy Spirit, I can choose to live free, free of bitterness, of bitterness and anger of what others have done, done, done to me. Help me help to release, me release them, them right now into your hands, your hands and, heal and heal the wounds of my heart. Everybody, everybody put those hands up. Everybody put those hands up. Everybody, Everybody put those hands, hands up. I don't know if it was Eddie Arnold, but back in the day, the country that had a song release me and let me love again. We're going to verbally say that song. Together, y'all say this. Yes. First, we're First, going to release them. them. Lord, Lord, help me release them. Release them. Say, it. Say it. Lord, Lord help, help me release them, them. and let, and me, let love me love again. again. Now, now, I want you to say, Lord, release, release me and let me love again. In the name of Jesus, I stand, I stand with, with my brothers and my sisters. sisters. I, agree I agree with them. them. They can't, they can't keep talking this around. around. It will, it will destroy them. them. Help, Help them. them. Oh, there's one, one way. Forgive, forgive those, those. Even, and even if it's themselves. Himself, forgive their, their self. self. So they can, so they can get, rid get rid of the pain, of the pain and, the and the torment. And I thank, and I thank, you, thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Give, Lord Give Lord a hand clap of praise. I want you to thank God for liberty. Thank you for liberty. Thank you for liberty. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you for liberty, God. Thank you for liberty. Yes, Lord. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. Which all that is added in there. D.C. and his little voice to go forgive our trash buckets. And we forgive those that throw trash in our buckets. Amen. Ready to say Lord's Prayer. I said Lord's Prayer. I'm going to ask God, Doug, to dismiss the prayer. Ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And we give us our trespasses.
Let our light shine for you wherever we go, that we would show your love to all those that we come in contact with, that they would know that we are your children, that you would watch over us in, in everything that is upcoming, for those that are traveling, for those that are in need, that you would be with them and comfort them. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.